Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to talk about in this video is something that I've seen coming up quite a bit. And people want to know, basically, how do I configure a Grandstream IP phone, a voice over IP phone? So let's talk about how we're going to do that. Now, there are basically three, three ways. And uh, the basic three ways are manual, a Grandstream UCM, if you're using their PBX, doing this provision. And then there's a third party uh, provisioning. And then once you get into third party provisioning, you can really go down the rabbit hole and it can do a whole lot of other things. But let's talk about these three ways. So the first one we're going to talk about here is the manual um, setup or manual provisioning. And this is my GXP, my, my daily driver, my GXP 2170. If I wasn't running this, it'd be a GRP 2614, my two of my most favorite phones. And you can see here that account one, uh, SIP user ID 5000, is registered to the SIP server 192.168.66.183. Now, this happens to be a Grandstream UCM, and I could either do this you know, manually, or I can use the uh, Zerocom config with uh, the UCM. But let me show you what a manual setup looks like and what you're going to need to know. So if I'm in my Grandstream IP phone, and they're all going to work pretty much like this. Now, the GRP series, they all have the newer interface. The GXP series, this they all have this interface. So there's, there's two different interfaces, but everything works the, the same. So in my GXP series, I'm going to go to accounts and you can see on this phone, I can have up to six accounts, but I'm only using account one. So I'm going to go um, over to general settings. Now these are the, the main things. And then we'll talk about some of the other things that you may need if you're doing this manually, because if you do this manually, anything that the phone can, any uh, SIP server that it can talk to, it should be able to um, connect to it. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to make the account active. Oh, get back there. Um, then we're going to put in an account name, uh, which is going to actually show up on the phone itself. SIP server is the IP address, so that can be internal. It could be a URL. It could be an IP address. Here you can see that it provisioned my internal... IP address. Uh, then you can have a secondary SIP server. If you need an outbound proxy, you can also configure that. And sometimes uh, the BLF server is not the UCM, so you can specify that. Now, uh, so you definitely have to have the SIP server and you have to have a user ID. And a lot of times the user ID and the authentication are the same, so you don't um, necessarily always need that. And you can see right here, it can be identical or different. Um, and then you have to have uh, the password. So you have to put that in there. And then you're going to want to know the voicemail access number. So when you hit the voicemail button on the phone, what's it going to dial to get you to voicemail? So those are some of the main settings. Now, you may have to edit dial dial plans. So if you're connecting this directly to a SIP trunk, you may have to come in, edit the dial plan, or if it's on a PBX that requires it, you may have to do that. Network settings. Um, you, sometimes you have to worry about this. Like if your phone's not in the same uh, subnet, you might have to adjust some things here. Probably not these days if you're using uh, uh, modern equipment. But uh, under SIP settings, you may have to, to make changes here. If you're doing this manually, your service provider or your uh, PBX manufacturer should tell you what these settings are. So you don't want to go in here and mess around with this unless you absolutely know what you're doing because you, really, you can really booger things up. Uh, the only other thing that you may need to really worry about besides these uh, general settings here is you got to make sure that you are using the proper codecs. So even if you're registering, if you're having problems 
with with voice, it may be because you're not using the correct codec. So in that case, you would definitely need to come in here and make sure that you have uh, the the correct codec and the correct order. Um, any other things that you might have uh, to set up? Like I said, your a lot of these are ancillary. You can get really fine grained and really control everything that these phones can do. I mean, you can come in here and uh, do uh, local feature codes and things like that. So manual, this is manual, and there's tons of other things. Now, one of the advantages to having a grand stream UCM is that we have this nifty thing that they call uh, zero config. And zero config allows us to use uh, templates. And I don't have uh, the template for the GXP, so I must have I must have configured that one uh, manually. I've been using it ever since I, I started using uh, Grandstream. But you can come in here and you can, um, anything that you can do in the phone itself, and I'm going to use a model that I don't have in there just so I don't um, screw up the settings on my, <laughs> on my phone. Um, what you can do is anything that you can do on the phone itself um, we can either use uh, in, in zero config, it's going to be called P codes. We can come in and if we don't see something in this menu to configure the phone, we can add a P code and you need to know the P code. You need to know the value and then you can add a description. Now, Grandstream does provide on their website a full list of all supported P codes. Uh, some new New uh, systems are also using XML. That's not what we're using here with zero config. We are using P codes for that. Um, but zero config makes it so easy uh, to, um, oh no, I did use right here. So it tells us this config was created 1115. I upgraded the firmware on the PBX before this video. And uh, what's really nice about zero config is if I want to um, deploy settings to this phone, I can edit edit the device. I can come in here, tell it what accounts in there. I can automatically do all my um, uh, VMPKs, my virtual uh, keys, my programmable soft keys. If I had extension boards, I can do all that here from a template uh, so that I don't have to do it manually on every device. Then there are um, advanced settings that you can take a look at um, on the phone, but I can fully provision this. And if I have that template that has the slightest details configured, I can push that to multiple phones and I don't have to touch it. That's the awesome thing about provisioning. Um, if you can do it, if you can't do it because you've got to do it manually, well, you could still probably do an XML file or something like that, which brings us to our, third option, and I'm using Fusion PBX as my example, but when you start looking at third-party PBXs, whether it's a Broadsoft PBX, uh, whether it's Fusion PBX, or some other PBX based on uh, free, uh, well, this is, uh, Fusion is free switch, but on uh, Asterisk, um, you can, a lot of them uh, will have provisioning managers or endpoint management plugins, and that will do provisioning. And I mean, Grandstream is the second largest, if not the largest now, IP phone manufacturer um, in the world. So they're all going to support Grandstream. And so that third party provisioning is going to kind of act like the, uh, the Grandstream zero config, but uh, you're probably going to have to use an XML file uh, some sort of a, a config file with that. And you can see here that Fusion does do auto provisioning of Yealink, Polycom, uh, Cisco, Fanville, Grandstream, HTEC, Zoiper, SNOM. I think there's some other ones. And then it tells you here um, how to manually uh, provision phones. And if you do a manual provision, then it, it walks you through how to uh, manually do that. And in their example, they're using an HT701. So if you've got any questions, specific questions about this, I am getting ready to do a 2023 uh, refresh, a complete PBX setup. 
uh, video and then which will lead into some training and things like that. But if you've got any questions about these three options for provisioning, I would love to talk about it because I'm sure that I didn't cover everything that everybody wanted in this video. So let me know down in the comments what you want to know about how to configure a Grandstream IP phone if there are specific things because we can take this and I mean, these devices can do so much. I mean, they're computers that let you talk, right? So, and that's their, their main function and they'll do video and we can answer doorbells and we can look at cameras on these things and do all, just all kinds of stuff, right? So let me know what you want to see and we can create smaller videos that get into uh, the minutia on some of those settings. And let me know what else you want to know about Grandstream IP phone configuration. And make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link if you'd like to support the channel. And if you need IT consulting because you need to get your IP phone system up and going or you have uh, other voice over IP needs, SIP needs, SIP's not limited to phones these days, uh, cameras, if you need uh, security, networking, storage, all those things, reach out at willyhow.com. Right on the front page, there's a contact form. Fill that out. If we can't help you, we'll get you to a vendor who can. Who can. That's our promise to you. I'm Willie. Once again, thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.